So hello guys welcome back to another video of our channel and in this video we'll be taking a quick look on how to enter static website. This has been a frequently asked question these days in my DMs so definitely we'll be taking a look on how to hunt a st static website what we can look for and many more things. But because in the video we are having financements here we are having the new batch of advanced property training launching soon so as you guys can see all the contents here this is the course where we do completely live things on the real life websites and real life scenarios and also we'll be having updated content, updated timeline of the schedulings and a very detailed content guide in the site. So you guys can definitely take a look on this and let's get in the video. So here we are on the computer screen now. So the first thing that we are going to look on the whole series is like how to hunt on static websites. So mm. as I wrote here, is it a myth or what? So we are going to discussing that a lot of people are telling that uh, static websites are not vulnerable, only dynamic with functionalities are vulnerable. So come on, it's not going to work like that. First of all, we need to take a look on what does a static website mean? So if I just go here, just type st static website. If I just type static website it simply shows that static websites are made of fixed code unless the site developer makes changes nothing will change on the page suppose you can just think of a lot of websites that are you know can be called static websites now what would be dynamic website fighting blocks e-commerce sites calendars and all this type of thing that would be updated frequently or we can make changes by our own unless the developer had to made an update that would be a dynamic website and that's a very simple uh, difference between static and dynamic. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that can we find bugs on static pages or some sort of, you know, websites with almost no functionalities on the embedded page. So yes, we can do these five basic steps. What would be the five or six steps would be backup files. So you can definitely try to find backup files. How you can find backup files? You can do fuzzing majorly. We can do brute forcing all these types of things, but how are we going to do fuzzing? You can use word list. You can take a look on the source codes to find multiple files and then again using them for finding disclosures or simply using them for fuzzing. We can do this type of repetitive things based on multiple sources as we have seen in the, our previous videos that we can try to do some sort of fuzzing intelligently instead of doing it repetitively. So we can definitely work on what functionalities are there, what technologies are there. We can first for GS files, we can first for ASPX files. So we can definitely use generators, the file name generators, all these type of things to get the backup files. Then we have the portals and panels. Absolutely. Because when there is a website, there must be a portal or a panel that we can try to hunt something on. So in our case, we are having portals and panels. So you can just do a few things to find portals always have a look on source codes they'll be of definitely giving you some things take a look on the technologies to find source code or uh, to find the panels and portals or you can do a few more things like let's say you can try to fuss for it fuss for panels or you can just try to find IPs they're all open ports and then we'll be jumping onto the uh, observation. Now web servers. So in many cases we'll be even having the server mm, versions and all these types of things. So definitely the versions would be vulnerable in many cases or misconfigurations. So suppose there is Apache going and you can definitely take a look on the vulnerable versions if there is any vulnerable version going on. Or we can jump on the misconfigurations done to them. And absolutely, we are having technologies that would be one of the best pages that we can hunt on it. So what do we mean by technologies is very simple. What technology is going on here? Maybe AEM, maybe WordPress, maybe Contentful, right? Maybe Shopify. So we might be having this type of technologies going on. They are, you know, supposed to be built onto them. 
So in web servers and technologies, you will definitely take a look on the version six part or what's going on in the actual sites, and that would give you a very practical idea. As we have seen in the free book bounty course, yes, we have done that type of things to get some sort of real life ideas. And obviously, if there's a technology is going on, you can fuzz according to technologies. You can find data according to technologies. You can even do disclosure so even just take a look on the default files their misconfigurations can be definitely fine now the last thing that i mentioned here is plugin so obviously expired or misconfigured now these are the things that we can basically do on static website but what are the main conclusions what are the main conclusions are here source code is important buzzing can give us a lot of things Look, being static site is not a big deal, but also uh, there are a lot of things that are embedded into it. So definitely misconfigurations would be there. Then expired or version based issues. That would be a big plus point for all of us. Then the content thing, where the content is loaded, how all the things are going on. Maybe there's some sort of buckets going on. So. Analyzing might be a good thing, or we can just do observation. That would be a very good option for us. Now, that are the main topics that we can discuss on, and definitely we'll be uploading a detailed video on how to run static websites in the upcoming live session. So stay tuned for it. I guess that was for the video. Thanks for watching, and see you guys in the upcoming video.